Hey, Kyle Quirk here, and today we have one of the most unique guests, and the education that I received and hopefully you will receive will be paramount. It's not myth, and it's not folklore, it's Rob Lore, the creator and owner of Alston Amps, and it's today here on Music Minded. Gan now. <laughs> Question number one. Can you take us back to the first time, and this is hard, but the first time that you experienced music? Was it a player? Was it a friend? Was it an album? Take us there, please. I actually remember way back, much further than most people do. I started playing the ukulele at four years old. Of course you did. <laughs> and I lived in Hawaii. And so my earliest recollections are playing Hawaiian music on the ukulele. All right, listen, question number two. And, and again, I won't get into the weeds here, but you know, I know you as a, as a great player. And I knew that you had some technical stuff. Francis, a friend of ours, he's got a great technical mind. But I, I knew you as a player. So was there a moment, even as a player, I know things have changed with the great amps that you're making, Alston Amps. But what was, was there a moment that you said, it didn't have to be a big money gig, playing with Carlos, nothing like that. But was there a moment where you said, I am doing it, I'm in it. And you kind of felt that. Oh, yeah. It's when I got the job with Aerosmith. That's the first time I felt like I was in the music business. Before Bang. that, I was a hi-fi salesman. <laughs> wow. So real quick, can you tell us the gig with some band named Aerosmith? Um, well, in about 2005, um, I had a friend. In fact, he's uh, my compatriot here at Alston Amps, John Lammy, who helps me build amplifiers when he's not out on the road running monitors for somebody famous. He's actually in California right now with Licky Lee. Okay. But um, he was working as a monitor engineer for Aerosmith and I guess one day they had a bunch of broken guitar amplifiers and he knew that I was sitting in Boston fixing broken guitar amplifiers and he said, hey, you want to come down here and fix broken amps? And I went and I, I didn't leave for about a year. <laughs> I got this out of uh, context. So the moment that it hit you was the Aerosmith thing. That's when you're like, I I'm doing this for real. Can, would that be your first great gig or was there a first great gig, you know, with amps or? Well, you know, I played in cover bands in Virginia and I was always a musical. I always wanted to play music. I came to Boston to go to Berkeley. Right. Which is where I met Francis and Clackers and all those guys. Oh, yeah. It was criminals. Uh, <laughs> I started out in hi-fi. When I was in hi-fi, I learned technical stuff, starting with things like soldering and terminating speaker wires at the store right you started from the ground up pardon the pun right and then right. And the hi-fi thing went a certain way and then i ended up going into pro audio for a while at a place called goodwin's high end which is where i learned a lot of um the way i think about things now came from working at goodwin's high end and i was really a turntable specialist there I really learned how to listen. Give me your, a hell gig. Can you give me a hell gig? Okay. I, I played in a band in Martha's Vineyard <laughs> called Entrain. And they're a great band. And they're a great bunch of guys. And, but it wasn't really my favorite kind of music. I kind of like hard rock and blues. and Yeah kind of a dance band you know okay and um we played a gig up in vermont and i can't remember exactly what happened but there was a song and i sang the song and played guitar and i started the song by myself and then the whole band came in 
Well, there were two horn players in the band. And I started the song like a half step off or something. And I was just playing and singing away. And then the band came in and they were trying to transpose. The bass player didn't have any trouble, but the horn players were ready to kill me. And it was just terrible. And that was my last night in entry. And that is my hell gig. However this hits you, hopefully it won't affect you because you'll just always be creating great gear. But where do you think the state of music is going? I mean, it's brutal, but where do you think music's going? The wow. business? Yeah, I know, I know, it's horrible. It's going off in a million different directions all at once, like it always does. I'll tell you what, I don't drive, so I don't listen to the radio anymore, <laughs> okay? So here's what happens. I'm stuck here in my secret underground lair. Thank God. Right? Knitting guitar amplifiers with, with burning hot crochet hooks and things like that. And John Lammy comes down and he's just gotten off the road. And he's like, here, check out this band I just did. It's Anderson Pack. And I go, oh, well, listen to that. And then he's gone again. And then he comes back and he's like, check out the new Snoop Dogg. I was just doing Snoop Dogg. And then I'm listening to new Snoop Dogg, which is kind of like reggae stuff and like all kinds of crazy things. Right. And then he, and you know, well, he's going to come back from this liquid Lee thing and I'm going to hear some new music, right? He was out with Megan the Stallion. I'd never heard anything. Right. Like that. right. Well, that's how I get exposed to music these days. Well, but then whatever whatever's happening, we're going to keep it just where you are. You're not allowed to drive. You're not allowed to talk to anyone except that cat. What would you say to a young buck, Rob Lore of Alston Amps, at 22? Not that you would do anything differently, but if you were that guy now in today's environment, how would you attack being a pro? You have to jump. Right? You have to untie the rope and jump. <laughs> Trying to have things to fall back on and make sure that everything was safe and whatnot. And you know what? I know other people that jumped that weren't necessarily even as good as me and they made it. Right. Sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not going to know what you're made of until you jump. Give me your three favorite vintage amps. I'll tell you what, let me answer that question with a question. <laughs> what's, you're a guitar player. Yes, sir. What's the coolest guitar amp, period? The coolest one? For me. What's the coolest guitar amp? I, I don't know, because none of them can do everything except for your amps, but if no, I. That's the right answer. That's the right answer. The coolest one. Well, is it a Dumble? Right. Well, if we say that, we're pissing off an awful lot of train wreck guys listening to this. A lot of guys that have Carol Ann's from Dr. C and people like that. What about a Marshall? How can you even talk about something there where there's a couple of hundred amplifiers ever made and compare that to what Marshall is or right. Vox? And how can you talk about guitar amps without talking about Leo Fender? Oh, amen, brother. Right, and it's it's all of those things. It's and it's it it's as spread out and as diverse as guitars. Whereas when when we're a young player, we think about oh, it's a Strat or it's a Tele or it's a Les Paul or it's a Flying V or it's a BC Rich or we're sure. all fascinated with that thing that you put your hands on. And I don't think the amps become as important until later. And then there are you know. If you do any studio work and they ask you to play something that sounds like psychedelic 60s, you'd better know to show up with a wah on a fuzz face. And a Vox. <laughs> right. Or if they say make something that sounds like, you know, the Beatles and right. you show up with a with a Vox and a and a Rickenbacker, right? It, it, and you go to a studio and they have all those amps there because when you need to make a sound, 
you need to have the right instrument. And whether that thing is a conga drum or, you know, an AC-30 yeah. specific Rickenbacker 12 string to make a certain sound, you need to have that thing or something damn close. Right. All right. Well, this and here's my next question. And I'm really excited to hear this because I wasn't I wasn't aware about your expertise in microphones. Had no idea. So, oh, yeah. have, but I'm going to I'm going to hold you to it here because I know you can take it. I need to know your three favorite. There's no way I could give you a top three because you'd have to I'd have to say to record what I know. I know you're going to. Yeah, right? okay, no, that's I, great. And I mean, I've worked with Telarc artists and I've worked with, you know, punk bands, right? Depending on what you're recording, you need a very different palette of microphones. Okay, this is great. So let's go. Let's go. Right. Three large diaphragm, three small diaphragm, three dynamics. We'll keep away the ribbons for now. Okay. Well, then I'm going to start with ribbon and just <laughs> let me not leave it out because it's super duper important to mention at least two ribbon microphones, and there are many cool ribbon microphones. But if you talk about microphones and you don't mention the Coles STC 4038, I believe it's yeah. called. Yeah. Um, you know, or the Royer 121. Yeah. Um, the 122 is lovely, but a Royer 121, if you're going to record electric guitars and you don't have that microphone, you're not doing it right. I'm going to remember that. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right so. that's, that's harsh, but I, you know what? I always at least put that mic up because it's, I almost always pick that mixed with either a 57 yeah. or a 421, depending on the cabinet. But the Royer is something that I learned. I learned that microphone at one point and I kind of went, well, you need to have that to do electric guitars. Awesome. Okay, so those are the ribbons. Give us the large diaphragm condenser. Large diaphragm condenser. Um, my favorite microphone to sing in is an original C12. Okay, AKG. All right. But if I were doing uh, a female vocal, for instance, I would rather have an Elam 250 or 251. Yes, sir. Right? Okay. Um, and if it were a uh, a certain type of female voice, I would need an M49. Okay, and then here's the honorable mentions. Okay, the version of the U47, that's called a U47B. And what it is, it's a U47, but instead of with a VF14, it's with an AC701K tube. Right, different tube. Are those the originals or are those the ones that replaced? It's a special thing that I believe the Austrians insisted upon, <laughs> um, you know, and um, it was one of those kind of things, but yeah, this microphone, the amplifier is not good. You must fix it. And, you know, so it's, it's basically a U47, but with an AC701K tube in it. And the other honorable mention is the same thing, but the U67, which is called an M269. I've seen it. Okay. M269 is a um, wonderful microphone. All right. I'm going to give you a topic. You're going to pick one of these three topics and we'll run with it. Uh, food, sports, or travel? I don't know anything about any sports. I don't go anywhere ever. <laughs> I mean, like never. What's good guitar tone? Here it is. Here it is in a nutshell. Good guitar tone. First of all, it's a system. It's your guitar and the cables and the amp and the speaker and all that stuff. But it's a system where there are no distractions. Elaborate on that. A system that when you play it, there is nothing about it that pulls you away from the music. A good guitar tone is the guitar tone made by a system that disappears. I love it. It goes away. And there's nothing left but the music and your emotions. 
Number nine. Number nine. You can take your fenders, your marshals, but you have got to hear this. I'll tell you, man, and I'm not just blowing smoke, and I wasn't even in the room. I'm just going through good monitors, and I just, it sounded like the best, a lot of the stuff sounded like the best twin reverb, and I thought, okay, so he's got the fender thing going, and then I heard the high gain, and I was like, I said, what? I've never heard an amp that can give you that feeling, not just hearing, that feeling of a marshal, and the feeling of a fender, and a high watt, and an orange, and I'm not saying that any of your amps do everything because you would shoot me in the face if I said that. <laughs> but just that you have such a great place to start and it's not hype. Those, the two, the, the three sounds that I focus on, right? Yeah. Back in the day, I used to call it clean. Yep. Mean and scream. <laughs> right? And my amps, they all do at least that much. You can go out and have a bite. It's just be sustaining, you know. <laughs> Listen, man, I cannot thank you enough. He is Rob Lore of Alston Amps. We'll have links. We'll have promotion stuff all on the bottom so they can see it when they're watching this video. We're going to catch up soon, man, because I could talk to you for two weeks. I've learned a lot. You are a monster. I can't thank you enough for joining us. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks all for right, having me. My head is still spinning from all of this. I knew Rob way back when, decades ago, as a really great guitar player. And, you know, it doesn't surprise you when very talented people do great things, but to, to I'm sure he's still playing great, but to bang a right and to create maybe the best amps made today. And that also, he was a microphone specialist working out of Klaus Heinz under his tutelage. It's nuts. So anyway, I'm still kind of shaking. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Thanks to Rob. Thanks to you for watching. My name is Kyle Querrick. It was Music Minded.